Good morning and welcome to another one of Drew's book reviews. So today's book is going to be on The Widow's House by Daniel Abraham. So this is the fourth book in the Dagger and Coin series uh, by da Daniel Abraham. So this one is all about The Widow's House or specifically Callium uh, House and the three brothers left over after their father's death, after Getter had executed him for treason against the crown after he tried to basically assassinate Getter. And a lot of focus on Getter's uh, war that's going on. So I say Getter's war, but I guess more accurately we could call it the spider priest's war and the spider goddess's war. Uh, is what's happening here. So essentially we have the Callium household has now been split effectively three ways. So what we have is we have Clara who is working hard to undermine the entire crown and the entire government that Getter Palanco has set up. Again, Getter is the regent uh, to the crown who is currently raising the now orphaned Prince Aster until he can take the throne for himself. But he's waging war across the land in the name of peace. His army is becoming tired and exhausted and weak and worn out. But he's got this cult of the spider priest on his side, which is giving his military the ability to effectively win battles without even trying, because the priests have this ability to just speak and people listen. All the these spider priests have to do is tell their enemy, you've already lost, and they believe it, and they give up, and they surrender. Uh, but his army is getting stretched thin as he goes to conquer the world. So what we have is we have Vicarian, who has Vicarian, who has become a spider priest, so he's one of the Callium household. And he has effectively become one of the spider priests, and turned over to that cult to become one of them. And then we have Jory Callium. He is the son of the former traitor who was executed. And he has become head of the armies in the military of Antia, put in charge by Getter Palianco himself. And then we have Bariath Callium, who is staking a final and last stand at Barancor, who is effectively now fighting and standing against his brothers. So we've got a war being waged in three different aspects, from the cult, from the military, and from those who are fighting against the hostile invasion. And then we have these three brothers, each on a different side of this war, each conflicted and battling with each other. And we have Clara, the mother of these three boys who is trying her best to end this war as quickly as she can through her own scheming and plotting behind the scenes. All of which, of course, makes for an extremely fun and exciting, entertaining read. I just absolutely love the interplay and the dynamics between the politics and the war and the battles and the cult mentality and the cultish behavior of these spider priests and their attempt to subdue and control the world through the power of their goddess, which is just really awesome. Now, one of the other really fun parts of this book, particularly is Innes, who is effectively the last dragon known to exist. In fact, Innes wasn't even known to exist until uh, Captain Marcus Wester and Master Kit found him at the end of the last book. Um... And he is now awake, and he, however, is not what you would typically expect of a dragon. He has a tendency to get drunk. He is a dragon who is absolutely miserable. He's not happy with his life at all. He woke up to a world to find that everything he had ever loved is dead and gone, and there's nothing left of it. So he's a miserably de depressed dragon who doesn't really seem to care much about anything. So 
but he also has this superiority complex in which he believes everybody is beneath him and he's better than everyone else. But he cannot bring himself to really care one bit about what's left to the world. And so we have Marcus, Master Kid, and Cithrin, uh, the banker, all of whom are fighting against Getter, his war, and his spider priest cult. And their only hope for success is this dragon that is depressed drunkard. <laughs> Which just the very idea, it makes me laugh. The idea of a drunk dragon uh, is, is, it's funny, man. Like, you just got to pick it up and you got to read it. It's definitely worthwhile the read. Now, speaking of Sithrin, I really liked how her character basically invented the idea of paper money. Um, and really the way that the banks were explained and paper money was explained. And the reason for it within this book was really awesome. We really liked how it kind of got into that aspect a little bit about how the paper money is really just a, a promise or a letter of transfer of debt uh, in which the crown or the government eventually would back and have to cash in, which if it you'll have to read it to really get the details of how it's explained within this book. But it basically explains our entire monetary system as it stands right now, uh, which... It was just a really cool way to explain it, and I really liked how it took that concept and implemented it so effectively into the story uh, within the these books. And overall, I just really, really enjoyed this. I'm loving this series of The Dagger and the Corn Coin, so pick it up, read it, check it out. You'll definitely not regret it. It's a great read, and I am certainly enjoying every, every moment of it. So please check it out, and uh, again, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to comment and subscribe below. As always, I will leave uh, in the description links to my Facebook and Twitter feeds, as well as the book review WordPress site as well. And of course, don't forget uh, to stay tuned, because coming up next, we are picking up Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. So uh, again, author I have never read, but heard some good things. Uh, and kudos to my wife, uh, Marianne, who happened to pick this up at a local free sharing library. So I'm glad that she did, and I look forward to reading it. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you're having yourself a great day. And sorry about the lighting at the beginning there. and just was weird, but glad we got a little bit better lighting. Now, again, thanks for watching, and uh, you just keep enjoying those books. You have a great day.